I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabri. We are living through unprecedented times with a global pandemic now approaching its third year. As a result, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund was created. This fund, administered by the state of Michigan, is designed to help homeowners cope with pandemic-related hardships, such as delinquent property taxes. See if you qualify. Please visit. Call 313-388-9799 or email taxinfo at waynecounty.com. We're here to help. Good morning. Uh, it is a good morning if we wake, if we woke up on this side of uh, the dirt, and now dirt and snow, we're doing pretty doggone good. Uh, if you were looking for the weekly broadcast of Ask uh, Welfare Rights, you have been successful, and you found us at the uh, Welfare Rights broadcast. My name is Maureen Taylor, and I work with the Michigan Welfare Rights Organization. Uh, we are here, and I'm saying we because my colleague Marion is uh, still taking a little time off. And uh, uh, I always think of her wherever I go, if I'm someplace where uh, uh, she's supposed to be there or not there at that time. I always think about Marion. So I wanted to invite all of you, if you're interested in calling into the station, to share advice or make a comment, you can always call us at area code 313 or you can call us at 868 If you happen to be on the World Wide Web, you can tune in also on your computer. And the way you tune in is to go to www. TV33WHPR.com. So uh, we've got a couple of things that we're going to be talking about this morning, but we're going to start off with a uh, guest who's calling us from Chicago. And this guest uh, is a tremendous organizer, uh, does a lot of union work. She is a professor. So we're going to bring her on board right now. Uh, Dr. Estrada, are you there? Yes, I am. What a lovely, lovely introduction. Wonderful, wonderful, Mr. Engineer. Can you boost that uh, volume just a little bit? All righty. Um, uh, I have asked Dr. Estrada to join us uh, this morning for a little bit of a conversation. Uh, as I say, she is an a advocate, a union organizer, a professor, and uh, living in Chicago uh, uh, today, on uh, such a day where I'm sure it's cold as the Dickens, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we're just very happy and proud and honored to have Dr. Estrada on the line with us today. And, uh, Doctor, would you start off by telling us a little bit of information about the kind of work that you do? And welcome, Dr. Estrada. Uh, you are on thank the air. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, there's a little bit of an echo, so I apologize for the lag. Uh, okay, and you know what I forgot to tell you is you can't use your speakerphone while you're calling in, so you I'm may not, have to I'm, put you know the... I'm using my headphones. Uh, okay. Is better? Uh, it, much better, much better. Go ahead, doctor. All tell right. us the kind of work that so, you do. Thank you, thank you. So I, I do this politically as a former resistance. My pronouns are they, them, a, yeah, Jesus. But it's also I don't put up with any fascist or racist, and that's key for me. A any kind of work, no sex and no ism. Um, so I'm also a mother of two young CPS kids that go proudly to National Teachers Academy. So I come at you as a mother. Uh, so a lot of the last political activism that I've done has been about COVID justice. So I was that mom that kept my kids home until they got vaccinated. But during that time, we, we said aloud to the mayor, Lori Lightfoot, that she needed to provide vaccines for the people. That never happened. It's still not happening. So that's one of my strongest advocacy points. And why not we're trying to put another ordinance, which, listen, it's, it's not going to pass. With this woman in charge, it's not going to pass. With these corporate interests, it's not going to pass. So what we want is to open up all these public buildings, like uh, abandoned schools that are underused or churches or buildings, to really, really develop the, the public health system mm. in Chicago, which has been gutted for decades. 
so so that's one area we're still trying to put the ordinance forward we had a pretty good budget we have a core of volunteers willing to step up but the mayor's not willing to move on this wow. and meanwhile black and brown people and poor people are dying you know so that's that's reality yes um, and yes yeah yeah so the the other thing of course is my labor organizing and i'm very proud as a cook county college teachers union local 1600 I do teach at Harold Washington College, which is one of the best city colleges of Chicago. We have other colleges like Malcolm X, I love Harvey, Kennedy King, Truman College, and others. And basically, we just want a fantastic contract, not just for the faculty, but for professionals and part-time professionals, because we rooted our contract in basic demands of community people. And that, I think, is what brought us to victory. I don't care what anybody says. So, so that's important. I can talk more about that just to give you some word in edge, white sister, because I know I talk a lot. Uh, I'm I'm going to want you to say a little bit more uh, uh, about Harold Washington. A lot of people may not remember, uh, where may not have uh, uh, been privy to being exposed to who that was. What was that person about, and uh, why are you connected to something called? the Harold Washington uh, Institute or college. Tell us about uh, Harold Washington for those that don't so, know. You know, I, I got a foreground Marine and I, I'm a tough woman from the barrio. And I'm probably going to start crying when I talk about this because Mayor Harold Washington was one of a kind. He was in office up until the mid 1980s, if I remember right. He was before my time, but he really came from the ground up from yes. the people. And I got to tell you that if you went to City Hall with an issue, he would see you in person. I mean, some of my comrades that were homeless, when they went to see them, he used to eat these big old hoagies. You know what he did before he said a word? Mm. He cut it up into four pieces to share. That's my kind of mayor. Yeah. And it's the kind of mayor Chicago needs desperately right now. Yes. I just cut. So right now, we're in the fight for our lives. And it's all kinds of areas. But we have this mayor sitting in office that's so corrupt and doesn't care about anybody. But Mayor Harold Washington, he, he was the first mayor to appoint a black woman to be the Chicago Department of Public Health Commissioner, Dr. Mm -hmm. Barbara Norman. Mm -hmm. Dr. Howard Norman was the assistant. And not since then have we had an actual public health in the city. You know, mm -hmm. um, he was mm -hmm. also very much about unity. And I, I got to tip my hat to... Rudy Lozano Sr., who, because he brought the Latinx voters back then, they were called Latinos, Howard, I mean, uh, Harold Washington had his victory. And that is why, because we had black and brown unity and a lot of other allies, but that was key. So, you know, very recently we commemorated his 40 years since he was mayor or something like that. 40 um, years, wow. And, uh, yeah. you know, we need, we, we need more Harold Washington. I don't, I don't care where they come from, but we need more to represent our interests. Okay. So, sorry, I almost lost it there, Maureen. But no, it, it no don't, don't, don't so get emotional. And it's all know. right. We know that, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, when they talk about here in Washington, they get that lump in the throat because yeah. of the just a, a description that you gave. You know, we haven't had much experience with uh, political officials, elected officials, saying here is uh, what the people need. And, and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I hear a lot of discussions, certainly around Detroit, uh, certainly around Chicago, where there's a great effort in terms of environmental challenges. Well, why don't we just build trees? And I'm for building trees, but I think some of the wood on those trees ought to be cut so we can build affordable housing. And so That's we right. can look out the window in the affordable housing and look at these beautiful trees. So what you're describing, uh, Dr. Estrada, is a mayor that had one foot in the community, one hand in the community. Part of his brain was connected to the community. I remember him well and was absolutely a voice that represented the needs of the community. They need to eat. They need shelter. They need clothing. They need, ho they need house care. And just when he was getting started, here he comes and has a massive heart attack and mm -hmm. takes, takes him out, you know. So uh, 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 I understand why it's an emotional discussion. I feel the same way. I do. I do. Uh, say a little bit more about the uh, Harold Washington connection that you have. And in terms of the, uh, you know, we just got finished with a November 8th election that 
Mm -hmm. made the whole world crazy. Now, I don't want you to be jealous, but in Michigan, you know, we took all of the seats that matter. We took them all. Okay, so I tell my friends and family, uh, you guys want to figure out how a world could look without fascism, without discrimination, uh, always based on uh, uh, class. Come and move to Michigan. Come and move to Detroit. And bring your long underwear and your thick socks, cause in wintertime it ain't no joke here. So, uh, mm. uh, Doctor Estrada, say a little something more about uh, well, the election results. How you all took a look at things in Chicago, and uh, what is the word? What's the word forward on how to deal with uh, election results where you live in the great city of Chicago, Illinois? Go ahead. Well, well, I got a lot to say on this because I'm also on the legislative committee for my union. And I'm a member of United Working Families, which is its own beast here in Chicago, separate from the National Party. So what happened here is that we actually had quite a bit of victory because we were able to defeat Darren Bailey, who was a total racist, sexist, fascist. He's essentially a neoconservative pretending to be a Republican, but that's most of them these days, right? So he got booted out because he instantly went after women's rights. Wow. It was a big mistake on his part. Yep. Let me tell you what, the day before... When people were voting, early voting, lines were about 45 minutes long or longer. Wow. Okay. You know, women, women came in full force and shut that down. And there were two judges, um, both of them supported by Trump. And it was down south. It was not Chicago. We were able to defeat them, too. So what's up next now coming up is the mayoral election, which is key. And I know you're not asking me to endorse, but we have another black man coming from the roots, from the community, former teacher, Brandon Johnson. I see a lot of Harold Washington in him, so he's a huge hope for us. I'm telling you, Maureen, when he declared that he was running, I cried for like 30 minutes because I haven't had a hope like this in a long time, you know. But what's up for us here politically is to continue to push for these ordinances, whether it's to stop people from getting kicked out of their homes, mm. whether it's to bring Chicago homeless home, whether it's to have treatment, not trauma. All these things are political and tied into a lot of campaigns coming from the grassroots. And we, we have a good progressive caucus, but we're not the majority. And we're not enough mm. to defeat Lori Lightfoot, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot at play here, a lot of corruption, but also a lot of hope. Uh, I happen to have been blessed enough to interview a lot of the potential candidates that are going to be endorsed by United Working Families. And they're all rooted in basic needs, all of them. That, to me, just points to the times. People are tired of status quo politicians. People are tired of getting stabbed in the back. You know, so I think for us, we got a tremendous race coming up in February for Chicago. But for now, electing, I know he's a millionaire, but electing Pritzker was actually good for us. Because had we had Darren Bailey, I wouldn't be living in Illinois no more. I'd be moving to Detroit with him with my whole family. I'm I telling you that it would be yeah. terrible here under another draconian governor like we've had in the past. We haven't even recovered from Rounder. He, he brutalized our map funding, our social services. Wow. You want to know why there's so many homeless yeah. people that need psychiatric help? Because he shut down the damn mental health centers. Yeah, yeah. You know? That, and, and what's this guy's name again? Brandon, what's his last name? Brandon Johnson. Brandon Johnson. Was, okay. You got to look into him. He's amazing and always consistent. His voting track record has been consistent. He doesn't just talk to the talk. Okay. So I'm about ready to walk the beat for him. I had to get over a little RSV first, but I'm ready, man. I ain't mad at you. Now, it sounds like uh, uh, certainly the National Welfare Rights Union needs to take a look at uh, Mr. Brandon uh, Johnson and uh, find out uh, what the alternative presses are in and around Chicago, but specifically in Chicago, and he's running for mayor. Did I understand that correctly? That's right. All Black right, so maybe uh, NWRU. Uh, from across the station uh, and, and across the area and across the states and across the country. Maybe we need to start a letter writing campaign and start uh, putting a uh, article in some of the alternative presses to tell low income people and moderate income people and union uh, folks, uh, organized and unorganized workers. They need to be looking into Brandon Johnson and making their way to the polls, I think you said in February, so we can February vote 28th. for somebody who looks like they have the uh, desires and the heart of the community as their leadership. So 
Uh, maybe we'll make that call. I'm going to be on a national welfare rights call later today. And uh, maybe that. that's the call now, we now, should make. Now, just to be fair, Maureen, he, he is not the machine candidate for the Democrats. That, that doesn't matter. We don't care about that. You know, national right. welfare rights, we ain't got no rules like that. <laughs> See? Good. <laughs> uh, our rule is who and how is a particular candidate. And we don't endorse candidates. But who is it who's speaking to the needs of the community? And based on your information and how much I trust you and so many others, looks like we need to look at and take a serious look at uh, yep. Mr. Brandon Johnson. Looks like that's the direction we need it. to go in, you know? And there are others, a lot of women of color, Maureen, who are running for other women's positions that are just as revolutionary. Yes. And just deserve the support. And so I'm, I'm trying not to overstretch myself thin, but I walk the beat for them as much as I can. Okay. Trying to have fundraisers, supportive via social media, so people can get educated about who they are because they don't have the big money to advertise. It's up to the people to tell the story. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Now, uh, Dr. Estrada, uh, I promise I'm not going to keep you too much longer. About another three minutes. Oh, I'm four enjoying minutes. myself. I'm enjoying myself. I'm glad, <laughs> and uh, we are enjoying your conversation. Now, give us a little bit more information about the union work that you do. What is the name of the union? I know it already. But what is it? <laughs> What's the kind of work that you all do? Because we it's have a, a number hole. of organized and unorganized people that listen to this station. So tell us for a little sure, bit about sure. your, your organizing work. So we, we, well, we do a lot more than contract campaign, but this was the first time that we were to demand to the people with a contract. So the union is called the Cook County College Teachers Union. I know it's a mouthful, CCCTU, Local 1600. So we are a union made up of uh, colleges, that, uh, like the city colleges and suburban colleges. We have faculty, professional security in my unit, and others have other adjuncts and whatnot. So we see we represent a number of workers. And we're a small union, but what we did with this contract was timely and necessary. So there were a couple of uh, proposals that were tied into the success of our students because what we see in the city colleges is that they wanted to privatize our system. We fought against it. We had to, right? So because they were doing stupid things like tripling the tuition for international students. Why? You know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And they consolidated programs in a really racist way. So we put language in there that if they consolidate programs, they have to come talk to us first. We're the experts, Maureen. Yes. We're the faculty. We're the advisors. We're yes. the counselors, right? And that's so right. that does make sense. And then, and even, I mean, this one does bring tears to my eyes because it took a lot of work. I went to the alders, I went to the community, I went to the students, still got a lot of work to do. So what we call this proposal is the community colleges for the common good. Mm. What we want is sustainable community colleges where there are wraparound services, psychiatric help, food for those that are food insecure, housing, medical assistance, right? All these things that our students need, and that's why they fail. Yes. So this this was a big battle, Maureen, and I was at the forefront of this one. I fought and fought against his attorney. They hired an outside law firm that was anti-union, anti-equity. You know, you imagine that. And they had like four attorneys on their side. Yep. Not on this issue, Maureen. And they couldn't with me, right? And, and uh, at some point, the attorney said to me, I'm not going to debate you, Hussu. Whatever, dude, our students have needs. Yes, And yes. they need to yes. be met. Yes. And so that's what this is about. So my, we got the contract language we got wasn't what I wanted. We wanted to have positions. We had a budget. We had high schools that we were going to partner with. What they agreed to was just doing the study. And we got the language down so we would be a part of that process. That is a victory, Maureen. It, it is. is. a revolutionary victory. It I'm going to build on that along with my union comrades. We're going to take the contract to the streets, and we're going to win those social services or the wraparound services our students need because I am tired Yes. All of us are tired of seeing how our students are suffering. And yes. what they care about in the administration doesn't align with what we care about. They care about making the buildings pretty. Who cares about that? You know, it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, now, uh, 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 I want you to say uh, quickly, is there anything we can do in Detroit? Is there a... Uh, um, a post office box or an address or something where we could send five or ten dollars to help uh, your union uh, to move ahead. Uh, can we send you a, a ream of paper 
So the next time you put off some flyers, you know, we old fashioned, we send you 500 sheets of paper. Should we send you some uh, a case of juicy fruit gum? Uh, what is it that you need that national you know welfare what, rights? You know what I need? I need, I need other know. people like you that have done this work to talk to. Because we know this has been successful with Chicago Teachers Union and all it's been successful in Los Angeles with the United Teachers of Los Angeles. But some of you are doing this mutual aid work. You're connecting in a way that's very thoughtful and deliberate. And we need wisdom. You know, short of that, uh, you can always retweet our stuff, repost our stuff, or you can contribute money to our mutual aid fund. But I don't, I don't have the link on hand. You could always hit me up at okay. Dr. Maria J. Okay. Estrada. That's okay. A-D-R-M-A-R-I-A-J-E-S-T-R-A-D-A, and I'll point you to the GoFundMe. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, Dr. Estrada, I was so pleased and happy when you agreed to uh, call in and give us anytime, some updates anytime. and whatnot. And I promise not to keep you uh, forever, and I'm already two and a half minutes over time. I want to oh, thank you sister. once again uh, for coming and sharing uh, over the phone the kind of wonderful work that uh, you all are doing. And uh, if you are willing, we'll call you again in a few more weeks to see what's going on. Thank you, Dr. I would love Estrada. it, Maureen. Thank you, my dear. Have a wonderful, Thank peaceful, you, and put you your too. long Everybody underwear have a on. Day. All yes, right, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. Much you take love care. and appreciation to you. All right. Take care. Thank okay. you, doctor. You too. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. All righty. Uh, 868-0342, You just heard from Dr. Estrada, Jesu Estrada. She's a union organizer, a college professor out of Chicago, and the things that she talked about are the things that we talk about all the time. We need students, we need residents, we need retirees, we need regular working people to have those things that help our lives Im and improve our lives. Um, uh, there are uh, so many, so many things that we need in and around Michigan. And uh, again, my advice to a lot of people, uh, move to Michigan. You want to get a better life for the next three or four years while we control and hold on all these things, uh, you should get in contact with us. So, caller, you are the next one in line. I want to thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. And, caller, you are on the line. You are live. Go ahead. Grand Rising, Grand Rising. Well, Grand Rising, and good morning, Grand Rising. It's so wonderful to hear from you. Uh, what kind of news do you want to share with us this morning? Before I give the Highland Park news, I would say I was very pleased, interested, and excited to hear the insightful, soulful, revolutionary interview with Dr. Stroud in Chicago. Okay. Uh, we are yes. all over the place. People yes. that want to see a new world, all right? <laughs> That's right. Okay. All right. Even some of y'all live in Highland Park. So, all righty. <laughs> Let's get the Highland Park report so we can see what we need to do, and where we need to be. Go ahead, Grand Rising. Maureen, I happen to have the write-in um, results Good. of the election, general election for November the 8th, if you're interested. I am interested. Tell us what, uh, what those numbers are. Sure. The write-ins for Mayor Carlton Clyborne, he received 342. Emmanuel Huntley received 14. Jerry Lewis Massey received 26. And Maurice Lawrence Turner received 287. Okay, now the winner of the mayoral release is uh, uh, Miss McDonald. Is that her? Is, right. Am I saying it right? You are. Glenda McDonald. Okay, and. Uh, how many votes did she get? Do you still have that? I'm sorry, I don't all right, have But I that. know it, it was over 1,000. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, all right, then the next closest one is the person that got 342 votes. Carlton Clyborne. Mr. Yeah. Clyborne. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that tells us that uh, mm -hmm. Ms. McDonald is a person, apparently, that the residents mm -hmm. of Highland Park feel she can do the best job. So, okay, right. uh, she takes office in January, right? 
Yes, ma'am. Already, uh, uh, everybody in Highland Park that voted, and those of you that didn't vote, especially those of you that didn't vote, you have no right to complain about anything because you didn't participate. Okay. Exactly. Already, uh, give us some more uh, write-in numbers. Yes, for clerk of Highland Park, Brenda Joyce Green received, how much did she get here? 359 votes. Okay. She's a write-in, and uh, it's a re-election. Okay. Janice Taylor Bibbs, the treasurer of Highland Park, she was also a write-in. Well, wait a minute. Before you tell us that, uh, mm-hmm. the clerk who did win. Yes. Who was that person? Brenda Joyce Green. Oh, it was the same person. Same person. All right, so she got uh, 359 votes. Correct. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now um, uh, the next uh, uh, set of uh, write-in candidates that you're talking about. Yes. For re-elected once again, Treasurer Janice Taylor Bibbs received 355 votes. 355 right votes, and that's the treasurer, and that's the one who won. Is that right? Yes, right. Okay, in. so we've got mm-hmm. two write-in candidates. Very interesting. Two mm-hmm. write-in candidates who won. All mm-hmm. right, so apparently there was no particular person running for those two slots. Would that be right? That's correct. Wow. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Madam Grand Rising. For city council at large, here's the write-in um Numbers. Tiana Joan Jackson received 27 write in votes. Jones Jackson, 27? Yes, 27. Okay, that sounds like the people on one block on both sides of the street voted for her. 27 votes, right? <laughs> All right, uh, uh, no disrespect meant to uh, uh, candidate Jones Jackson, but uh, if that's what you got, 27 votes. It sounds like your campaign might have uh, 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 been better if you went off the block, maybe the following block. So go ahead. <laughs> yes, Rodney Paul Patrick received 247 votes. Uh, and that's for city council at large? Yes. Oh, boy. So how much mm-hmm. was that? 200 and what? 47. 247. Mr. Mm-hmm. Patrick went off the block. And he did, <laughs> looks like he did a little bit of campaigning outside of uh, uh, just the street that he lives on. Okay, 247. Uh, go ahead. Now, who was right behind him was Charmaine Robinson. She received 233. She was right behind him, 233. Yes, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so she went yeah. off the block, too, and campaigned a little bit. Okay. Now, for City Council District 1, that's my district. Go ahead. Devlon Jackson received 44 votes. Jackson, Fawn, f- 44 yes. votes. Go ahead. Yes. Fawn Kern received 81 votes. Go ahead. Elaine Jean Robinson received 24 votes. Go ahead. Bonita Stone received two votes. Oh, my goodness. Two. Okay, go ahead. Two. And thank God, Tamika Manica received 140 votes in my district. 140 votes, all right. Uh, and uh, obviously, she was the winner. Yes. Very good. All righty. We're Let's very see. excited in my district. Uh, now, she takes office also in uh, January? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go mm-hmm. right ahead. How about that school, For- that school board? Oh, okay. For the, I don't have the numbers right now. Okay. I can scroll in a minute if you don't mind. I'd like to finish the city and then I can scroll. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. All right, please go ahead and finish with the list that you're reading from. Go ahead. City Council District 2. District 2. Kendrick Eric Bates. He received 182. Anita Maurice. Smith White received four votes. Go ahead. Okay. It's a write-in. Uh, the winner of the write-in for District 2, then, looks like uh, Mr. Bates at 182. 
Well, he was a write-in, but he he did not win. Uh, Miss Martin won. Oh, she okay. was on the ballot. Miss Martin was on the ballot. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, 182 votes. That's not shabby. Okay. Well, He's a former council person. Okay, so name recognition may have helped out there. Mm-hmm. Okay. City Council District 3. Go ahead. Derek Dwayne Armstrong as a write-in. Yes. He received 65 votes. 65, go ahead. Write-in. But the winner for District 3 is Kashida Shafi. He was on the ballot. All right, and what's the last name there? Ashafi. Ashafi, go ahead. Mm-hmm. He's my brother from another mother. All right, and <laughs> how many votes there? I have to pull his up, too. Okay, all right, so it was more than 65. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. much more. Okay. Let's see, I've got someone who sent me some more reports. Here we go here. Glenda McDonald received 1,537 votes. Okay, that's the mayor. The mayor. Okay, Mr. McDonald, got it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Total votes were 2,292. Mm-hmm. She got 67% of the vote. Uh, looks like it, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, you asked for the Highland Park School Board? Please. Evan Morales, 653 votes. Six Cheryl Sanford. For, uh, uh, Evan, I know who that is. Go ahead. You know Evan. You know him well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cheryl Sanford, 1,095 votes, 20%. Go ahead. Janice Spite White returning, 1,119. She received 21 votes. Newly elected a newcomer to the board, Doris Harris. 1,122 votes. She received uh, 22%. Go ahead. And Grand Rising, Linda G. Wheeler received 1,362 votes, 25%. Okay, 1,362? Yes, ma'am. All righty. All right. Looks like Grand Rising uh, went off the block, too. And, <laughs> and did, some campaigning in, in, <laughs> did some campaigning in... Uh, nearby uh, uh, communities within Highland Park. Okay. <laughs> All righty. And once again, you you and uh, the other folks will take uh, your seats in managing the school board in January, correct? In January. Well, okay. I was reelected. Janice Fight White was reelected and Cheryl Sanford. So we're still on the board. Okay. We ran for reelection. Okay. Okay. In fact, uh-huh. Uh, uh, while we're talking about the school board, yeah. now that the state has uh, elected uh, uh, a progressive slate, whatever mm-hmm. progressive means, uh, what kind of things uh, are you looking forward to in terms of student support in Highland Park? What, what, what is on your wish list? You know what's on our wish list? We've been talking about this and since Gretchen... Our governor is back in the office. We're going to have a conversation with her only because we are ready, willing, and able to get our debt eliminated. Uh, and we need the state's help. Uh, we're, we're talking about a school, uh, a high school, which will eventually bring in more families, uh, grow the population. But as a school board, we're still continuing to fight for the mission of our children. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we receive funding from the state, which we know is available. And all this we will um, plan and strategize with the community in the new year. Now, uh, this morning I sent a message to the governor. Yes. where uh, there was a congratulatory and a thank you message that a lot of people received uh, that helped to get her, Secretary mm-hmm. of State, the Attorney General, and some of these other folks elected yes. for the next four years. And I wrote the governor this morning to tell her mm-hmm. that over the next two, three weeks, we're going to pull together a sort of a community-based report. And that yes. report is going to identify 
uh, in Lake County, here's what those folks there say they need. In Isabella County, here's Excellent. what folks there think we need. And that covers uh, education, that covers uh, health care, that right. covers a variety of things. And right. I certainly would be interested once I send you and uh, certainly Marion and uh, uh, Miss Gracie and some of the other folks mm -hmm. in Highland Park want to send you a questionnaire and yes. ask you what three things do you need uh, in terms of the school board in yes. Highland Park. Now, we're two years, two and a half years behind all yes. across the, the state. Uh, this COVID has devastated a lot of things. Tudor Dixon's comments mm. is really what, you know, uh, made her fail uh, was about <laughs> uh, uh, the right to have a medical procedure. And the other thing was uh, up, her being upset with Governor Whitmer because uh, businesses uh, were forced to close. The governor said close them. Mm -hmm. uh, if you got groups of people showing up uh, and, and uh, the capacity to spread COVID is going to circulate among them. And whatever reason, Tudor Dixon thought that was not a good idea. She wanted people to keep getting together and keep getting COVID and keep dropping dead. So now when we talk about the way forward, and uh, education certainly has been one of your fortes for quite some time. Yes, uh, I see people talking about kids need uh, 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 books, a set of books to use in the classroom, and an identical set of books at the house. So mm -hmm. that once homework, and I ask kids about homework, and they tell me at my school, we don't give out homework. We don't get homework. What are you talking about? What? Uh, that was news to me. Uh, I, I didn't question it because I know that somebody created this concept a yeah. while back that kids don't have to learn how to do cursive writing. And right, I was right, stunned right, right, at right. that. And uh, so now what do you think about uh, an educational uh, support, uh, 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 just a one piece, and that books that kids study for geography, mm -hmm. for math, for history, mm -hmm. and whatever else, the same identical set of books are purchased and kids can keep those books at the house so they don't have to transfer this stuff back and Excellent. forth. What do you think? Uh, Grand Excellent. Rising? And you know, Mar Maureen, you're, you're a blessing. And I thank you. Nah. You're a blessing. Just, yeah, you are. Just hanging you're out. You're a blessing. Just hanging out. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I thought about that because I've heard it and I've seen it a couple of places. And uh, uh, the, the reading is becoming more and more obsolete. And I mean mm. reading with a book. And mm. I remember um, mm. Grand Rising, we used to have something called Clef Notes. You remember that? Uh, Grand Rising, are you there? All right, Grand Rising did not pay her uh, cell phone bill, so we, we, we may have to uh, boost it up a little bit. But uh, what I, I wanted to mention to her is we used to have something called Clef Notes. And, and uh, she'll call back. And Clef Notes were the condensed summary of your you know, classics usually, Beowulf, uh, Knights at the Round Table, uh, uh, some of the uh, 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 books and whatnot uh, uh, that were very popular. And so instead of reading, reading the entire book, the cleft notes and the summaries were there. Grand Rising, are you back? Grand Rising, are you there? All right, she's going to have to call back again. This is what happens if you don't pay your cell, your cell phone bill. They cut off your cell phone services right in the middle of a conversation. So we'll wait for Grand Rising for just a minute to call us back. 868 4336 868 0351 868 0342. All right, let's see if we can get this call back. Grand Rising, are you there? Yes. Yes. All right. I don't know what happened. Uh, well, I have paid my phone bill, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I suggested that that's what happens if you don't pay that cell phone bill. So I wanted I to get your uh, uh, internet bill. Okay? Uh, uh, truly, truly. So I wanted to get your reflections about two sets of books. And another thing that happens at my school, and some of this is uh, uh, maybe I didn't get a chance to eat a full breakfast uh, in the morning, or maybe I didn't get a chance to eat right. a full dinner the night before. Right. So after and in between classes, we have a lot of kids mm -hmm. in my school that go to the cafeteria mm -hmm. and start asking for food. Can I? Have, we always have a basket of fruit, 
that sits right. on the counter all the time. So there's right. apples and oranges, mm -hmm. different kind of mm -hmm. apples and oranges that are out there all the time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about a more robust diet that's made available to children across the state? They need to eat all the time. What do you think about Excellent. that? Yeah, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I taught at the high school, yes, I, 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 we had break, free breakfast, you know, in the morning for children. Yes. But I know throughout the day, especially when you're growing, you need something to eat to keep that blood sugar up and the brain going. Yeah. So with the help of other instructors, I always had uh, fruit and uh, trail mix sitting out on, on my table, mm. on my conference table, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, we even would have cooking classes in the room. Yes. Uh, you you know, just like a car. A car can't run without fuel. Children would come to school eating those hot Cheetos and Doritos, you yep. know. And that's all junk food, you know. Salty so junk food at the, that. The yep. Black Panthers started the free breakfast program, which, you know, in turn, the, 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 uh, the state, the government copied off of that. Yes, And yes. all they were talking about was feeding the people. Okay. We have so I, much in this country. Yeah, yeah. The capacity for kids to eat, and the, the only downside to that is that, you know, they'll take uh, food into the classroom, and, you know, their crumbs and all this other kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we have to spend a lot of time trying to explain mm -hmm. to kids you have five minutes mm -hmm. in between class. Right, right, right. And when uh, it's time for your lunch period, we used to have a mm -hmm. lot of problems with this. During mm -hmm. your lunch period, the kids would go uh, 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 open their backpacks and open up, mm -hmm. what's the name of that stuff? Uh, uh, ramen noodles. And Lord. that ain't nothing but uh, salt Lord. and heart attack medicine. Mm -hmm. And they would go heat those ramen noodles mm -hmm. up, put two teaspoons of water, whatever mm -hmm. it was, mm -hmm. and they would eat those ramen noodles. Mm -hmm. And then an hour later, you know, because mm -hmm. there was no protein content to any of right. that, the, uh, they sleepy and they're tired mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. focused. So now that uh, uh, we're, you, you know, it took a year for us yeah. to get a, uh, um, what do you call it, a, uh, a salad bar. Okay. And at first we weren't sure if it would work or not, but here's the salad, and they use mostly romaine mm -hmm. salad, and I'm going to talk about that for a minute, mm -hmm. because That's after the hurricanes down in Florida, it's hard mm -hmm. to get romaine lettuce. Go figure mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. So uh, lettuce. And uh, uh, I argued that they should put spinach out there, too, because that yes, spinach salad is delicious. And yes. if you know what to do, though, what is yes. delicious. And there's yes. a container that's got little cherry tomatoes and another mm -hmm. container that's got sliced cucumbers and another lovely. container mm -hmm. that's got uh, bits mm -hmm. of chicken, grilled yes. chicken. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, the last argument there is that all mm -hmm. these kids like ranch dressing. Mm. I took a number of kids, Miss Grand Rising, and took them back into my office, and these are okay. some gifted students, meaning yeah. they're not the smartest kids, but they mm. want to help each other and help others. And I That's told them, look, we're going to have a special dinner, and I'm going <laughs> to show you that there is something other than ranch dressing. <laughs> There's something called uh, a vinaigrette. Oh, There's some vinaigrette. other kinds of things, and oh, they Ooh. face frowned up. We're not going to eat that. Ooh. I just want you to try it. And that Strawberry stuff is expensive. Grand Rising, let me tell you, I mm -hmm. had to stop that program. That's <laughs> all they wanted is that expensive mm -hmm. uh, vinaigrette, yes. aged yes. vinaigrette. Boy, Miss Taylor, this mm -hmm. is delicious. I mean, look, I can't mm -hmm. keep buying mm -hmm. this stuff for you all. Uh, yeah. Miss Grand Rising, the <laughs> salad uh, bar mm. is full. And those mm -hmm. kids go through there, and I bring a, a bottle mm -hmm. of, uh, of uh, French dressing if I can, yeah. or Italian dressing. And right. that raspberry vinaigrette, oh, they love oh, that. But I tell them God. that that stuff Ooh. is expensive, you know. Ooh. And there is, uh, at the end of the day or at the end of uh, lunch, there's mm -hmm. no uh, lettuce and tomatoes. Those mm -hmm. things are not thrown away. Those things right. are in the stomach. So in they that, love that, the right. salad <laughs> bar. Love it, mm -hmm. you know. But I'm glad. I, I'd be happy when they graduate. And get a job so they can buy their own <laughs> vinaigrette. You know, that stuff is expensive, you know. So, uh, yeah, lunchroom <laughs> activities for kids. They used to serve uh, mm -hmm. the little raw carrots. I had to protest mm -hmm. that one. 
Now, no, we yeah. don't want any more of that because they use those as projectiles and almost hit me a couple of times. <laughs> but uh, the meal and the choices of the meal uh, at uh, my school has improved so much. And mm -hmm. uh, all grades, uh, uh, the little bitty ones, right mm -hmm. up into the 11th and 12th graders, they like mm -hmm. these, the uh, salad bar activities mm -hmm. and uh, Brussels it, sprouts bar. and, and uh, broccoli. Yeah. Excellent. You know? Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Healthy choice. Madam Healthy. Grand Rising, let me keep you another couple of moments. We sure. seem to have a lot of trouble with kids calling threats in the schools, okay? Oh. For the last two, three, four days, it's five or mm -hmm. six or seven high schools, elementary schools, mm -hmm. middle schools, having mm -hmm. to put their schools on lockdown because mm -hmm. somebody wrote a note, somebody sent an mm -hmm. Instagram, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, threatening mm -hmm. violence at the schools. What is... Mm -hmm your reaction to what's going on here in the last couple of weeks with that situation. Uh, tell us what you think. Well, you know, when we had public education here before our district was shut down, uh, 2010 and 11, we were shut down in 2012. We had bomb threats three times a week from 10, 2010 to 2011 which meant that as soon as you heard the alarm, you had to put on your coat because most of the time it happened in the wintertime. I don't even remember most of it happening in the spring, but it was always when it was very cold. So for a whole year, we had these bomb threats way back in 2010, which meant that every time the fire department came, that was a $500, $1,000 fine. Eventually the um, uh, person was caught. Uh, that was making these bomb threats and really, you know, destroyed their life because now they're uh, on the terrorist um, list yeah, as well as their family. Yep. And what they were doing was making the phone call right across the street. There's a gas station yep. and the high school was definitely across the street. So yeah, it, it, it's escalated, you know, and it hasn't stopped. Um, it's going to take the community and parents and, of course, the administration and teachers and everybody, even the mailman, the mail ladies, to, to, to continue to encourage our students, encourage our young people to help them make the right choices. Yes, yes, yes. Stop all this. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. You know, and I, I, I'm sure that a lot of this mm -hmm. is copycat. But, yeah. you know, it seems like the motive for this is somebody got upset with someone else at mm -hmm. the school. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they were, uh, I'm thinking about the three football players at the University of Virginia that were shot and killed oh, by I a classmate. Yesterday. And I can only Here's imagine, I can only imagine mm. the school having to pick up the phone and it's calling uh, uh, Jamel's mother or, you know, yeah. whoever. And uh, uh, this is uh, the University of Virginia calling you and mom and or dad, whoever answered the phone, mm -hmm. expecting, oh, great news. They not only made the football team, right. maybe they made the honor roll or maybe right. they got the uh, distinguished mm -hmm. awards kinds of things. And mm -hmm. happy when they pick up the phone and on the caller yeah, ID, sure. it says University of Virginia. And they pick up the phone expecting good mm -hmm. news and the mm -hmm. college conversation says I have something to tell you with that voice mm -hmm. that makes you know wait a minute what has happened mm -hmm. so uh, uh, a college or a co a, a, a colleague uh, shot these other colleagues and mm -hmm. killed these uh, young men and you know I guess we're going to hear something uh, fairly soon with the arraignment mm -hmm. and what was mm -hmm. the purpose of this but the horror of that pierced and, my heart when I read that yesterday. Lord have mercy, Jesus, and you know they they uh, they all the students involved. I mean, you know that you you yeah. won't be able to get over this for a while, yeah. and they've locked down the college and shut down the basketball and the football yeah. games and whatever else, not doing any of that for about a week or ten days. But then after that, school and classes are going to resume. And yeah. how are you going to deal with this? Uh, yeah. We got four found dead at the University of Idaho. 
and uh, uh, the police officers involved, this happened about two weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, the police officers involved in the investigation say they don't know, they don't have a, a suspect mm -hmm. yet, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that uh, what has to happen, thank you, sir, what has to happen is the police will get to the bottom of what this mm -hmm. is, but seasoned veteran police yeah. officers are yeah. talking about the gruesomeness of mm. the scene. There were mm. two students at that house in Idaho that survived and were not oh. injured. So there oh. are strings at, uh, mm. attached and pieces that have to be connected to yeah. tell us what this is about. But what in the world is going on with 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds mm. and 20-year-olds mm. yeah. that make them believe that this level of violence is mm. appropriate, people being radicalized mm. online? Mm and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. So I wanted to give you a moment to walk through that as, uh, yeah. my goodness, I didn't mean to keep you so long, but share your thoughts. Well, you know, everybody needs from time to time a mental health checkup. And what we have to continue to do and be more cognizant of is have communications with our loved ones and friends if you notice that they're a little different or withdrawn or maybe angry, conversation, communication is the key. Now, sometimes, as we know, when people are having problems, they don't want to admit they have problems or want to seek help. But it's us, up to us that are, are, are viewing uh, erratic or un, un, unusual behavior to, 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 to step in and, 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 and do something about it, whatever we can. I totally agree, totally agree. Well, Madam Grand Rising, as always, uh, you bring us the latest in terms of information, uh, uh, things that are happening in Highland Park and mm -hmm. other areas. Uh, we've shared some detailed information about this election and the aftermath and what yeah. we might be able to support, what we might yeah. be able to uh, uh, message uh, the governor about, Here's some That's things right. we want you to think about, and we'll help you That's get it right. together. So uh, right. I think all we can do, Madam Grand Rising, is uh, the best we can. That's right. That's all That's we right. can do is do That's the all best we can. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all we can do. Mm -hmm. All right, today is Friday. And help one another. Yes. And be kind. Yes. Uh, today is Friday, and I'm thinking that also from 9 to 3, folks that are now convinced that they should get that booster shot or maybe there you, you want to get that first vaccine, you That's can right. go to uh, the Highland Park Rec, Rec Center at 10 That's Pitkin right. and can That's go right. there, and uh, uh, those uh, wonderful people at that mm -hmm. facility will give you what it is you came there to get. That's right. Uh, Miss uh, uh, Grand Rising, thank you once again for an outstanding thank report. you. Lord willing, the creek don't rise. We will expect <laughs> you to call in next Friday. <laughs> will do. And Enjoy thank you so weekend. much. Very Goodbye. good. And be safe out there. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you much. All right. We're down to our last six or seven minutes. 313-868-0342, 868-0351, or 313-868-4336. Uh, every week we give out these same numbers, and people are complaining, and they're calling me, uh, and they're calling others at Welfare Rights talking about we can't uh, uh, get enough people to call us. There's money available at Wayne Metro. Uh, there was the United Community Housing Coalition celebration, 48 years. They've been involved with helping people to not become homeless. Uh, we learned last night uh, Marion was recognized for over 35 years of organizing uh, around homelessness and so many other things. Uh, there was a report given by the executive director, Ted Phillips. One of the programs that uh, the United Community Housing Coalition was engaged in, and about 15 years ago, uh, I was in some trouble. Uh, d didn't have a job and been blackballed out of a whole bunch of things, and they found out about it. I've known them forever. And they hired me to work for them for about five or six months. And the task at that time was to identify properties where people still lived inside, and they were behind on their taxes so badly that they were about to be evicted. And the task was 
uh, to get a hold of those folks living in the house, get them down to United Community Housing Coalition, determine how much the taxes were, and United Community Housing Coalition would buy that property for the taxes that were behind. So maybe it was 3000 maybe it was 4000 maybe it was $6,000. United Community Housing Coalition bought that property. And then what they did is uh, two or three months down the road, uh, what they would do is contact the homeowners and, uh, very good, contact the homeowners and tell them, we're going to sign you up. Uh, there's a period of time. We, go, we bought your house. We're going to give it back to you. And you have to pay this off, these taxes, but the house will go back to being yours. And Ted and some of the folks said they had uh, spent $300,000 over a period of years purchasing houses. Then he asked the question, you know how much money we got paid back? Now, they spent 300000 They got paid back $300,000 because everybody, nobody defaulted, everybody that borrowed money and was able to get their properties returned to them, each and every one of them paid it back. That's remarkable. We need to remember there are organizations like that. United Community Housing is 963-3310, 963-3310. The Michigan Legal Services Group, uh, Marilyn Mullane and that group, 313-964-4130, 964-4130. And if you miss those numbers, you can always call us at Welfare Rights, 313-964-0618, 964-0618. My engineer says it's time for me to wrap this up. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you learned and heard some information that may be valued to, be, to you or to your family and friends. And then again, if the creek uh, is running, and the creek don't rise, and the Lord says, okay, we will be back, we being Marion and myself, next Friday at 10 o'clock. So what we always say, and Marion is not here, but I'm sure at home she's waving, at the end of every broadcast, what we say is goodbye. I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabri. We are living through unprecedented times with a global pandemic now approaching its third year. As a result, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund was created. This fund, administered by the state of Michigan, is designed to help homeowners cope with pandemic-related hardships, such as delinquent property taxes. See if you qualify, please visit. Call 313-388-9799 or email taxinfo at waynecounty.com. We're here to help.